Hey everyone, welcome to Plants and Politics. So I know I'm hard on Democrats uh, because I think that they, in most cases, are weak and feckless. <laughs> I, and I want them to do better. I want them to be better. But I acknowledge that some of them, the more progressive ones, are trying to make the lives of average Americans better. One positive thing that Democrats are trying to do right now is to expand Social Security benefits. Connecticut Democratic lawmaker John Larson drafted a bill. It's called the Social Security 2100, um, and then subtitle A Sacred Trust. The bill is co-sponsored by 200 Democrats, so no Republicans at all, of course, and it would increase benefits for the current 65 million Social Security recipients. So this doesn't expand it to additional people, it, it expands the benefits themselves. And here's how. So the average retiree would get a bump of only about $30 a month per person. But Larson says, you know, this is long overdue because of the minuscule increases that they've been given over the years. And also it's needed right now to offset the annual increase in their Medicare Part B coverage. Um, Larson's bill, though, would increase the benefits in other ways as well. So it would raise the floor, for example, on the minimum benefit, which is paid to low paid workers. Um, That's what they receive at retirement. This means that they'd benefit the most from this bill. Uh, the example that was given by The Intercept was of a 66 year old worker who had worked full time for 30 years earning the current federal minimum wage, which would be $15,080 per year. Right now, that same person receives approximately $11,200 a year in social security payments. Well, with Larson's proposed bill, that same person would receive almost $16,000 a year. So a pretty substantial increase for the lowest paid workers in the country. The bill also would allow surviving spouses to continue receiving up to 75% of their deceased spouse's social security benefits. So if their spouse passes away, they're not just stranded and on their own anymore. And benefits also would increase for those who've been receiving social security payments for the longest. So they want to do that to offset the savings that some of these people have burned through during their retirement, because, you know, nobody's living off of $11,000 a year. And a lot of people have saved for their retirement. So if they live 20 years into retirement, they're kind of screwed. I mean, people are almost hoping they pass away before they burn through their money. Well, under the proposed bill, after 20 years of being Social Security eligible, um, regardless whether you're a retiree or someone who's maybe disabled and reserving these benefits, those people, after you've been eligible for Social Security for 20 years, you would receive an automatic 5% increase in your benefit. And so that comes out to, on average, for the average worker, about $1,000 additional per year. In addition, and this is a huge one, people who've spent their lives taking care of others who you know weren't working a traditional job, they were working their asses off, those people will now be eligible for social security benefits too. Because as we all know, you know, many people work more than a full-time job raising children and or taking care of elderly relatives and you know other people in their lives who they care for. Up until now, they've been treated as if their hard work, their dedication was meaningless. It just didn't count. Well, this bill would provide those people with credits as if they had had a traditional job working outside of the home. So they would then be eligible for Social Security as well. Um, so the Social Security 2100 bill would also provide immediate benefits to people who become disabled, um, severely disabled, I should say. So currently, there's a five-month waiting period in place, which I wasn't aware of. I don't know what they think people are supposed to do for five months if you're severely disabled. I mean, it's not like you just can't eat for five months. 
So anyway, for people who are partially disabled, benefits then would gradually decrease as they're able to reenter the workforce. Whereas right now they're just cut off. If you are starting to get better, you're done, you're cut off. And so here's how they're going to pay for it for all the people out there going, hey, you're going to pay for it. Hey, you're going to pay for it. <laughs> but we have money to kill people, like I always say, but we don't have money for the living. So right now, OA SDI taxes, those are for Social Security, those are for disability, those are taken out of paychecks, but only up to the first $147,000 in income. If you earn more than that, you're not taxed. For, that particular tax isn't taken out on that money of over and above that amount. Larson's bill proposes that the OA SDI tax should also apply to income over 400000 Now, he chose that specific threshold due to Biden's promise that he wasn't going to increase taxes on anyone making up to $400,000 a year. Honestly, I think that part is kind of ridiculous. I think either everyone should be paying for it or only the most wealthy should be paying for it since they get these insane tax breaks and they exploit all these loopholes. So they end up paying far less as a percentage of their overall income than a school teacher. That's his proposal, though. For me, to make the lowest income earners pay for this and then allowing those earning nearly half a million dollars a year to slide, it just, it doesn't make sense. Anyway, I mean, overall, I think it's a positive idea. I think it's a good proposal. I hope Dems don't choke again. Um, although, you know, this is going to be very difficult for Republicans to vote against because it is going to be popular. And right now, I have to say, there appears, at least to reporting from The Intercept, there appears to be one roadblock to this, and that is a senior aide to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. It's an old school Republican in Dem clothing. It's a guy named Wendell Primus, and he appears to be against this. So we'll see. Um, what's clear, though, is if Dems don't pull a few rabbits out of their BLM hats before the midterms, they're screwed. They're done. All of their culture war chest thumping will mean nothing if they don't actually deliver changes that are going to help average Americans, especially those who, due to historic racism, you know, they need this change the most. They need things like this. If people really care about minorities, they will get behind things like this. This is Democrats' chance to prove that they really mean it when they're kneeling in kente cloth, that they don't just talk the talk. Because, you know, we had so many racist laws, so much oppression, and things like redlining in the past that my, which still happens sometimes, you know, they get sued now for it, but they got away with it for a long time. So min minorities weren't able to buy homes at the same pace as their white counterparts. And even if they did, their neighborhoods didn't appreciate at the same pace due to other illegal practices, things like steering. So they therefore weren't able to build as much generational wealth as white Americans, which is the number one way of building wealth is by owning your own home. So they have less retirement. They have fewer assets to fall back in their, on in their golden years. Um, so if Democrats really want to prove that they give a damn about black and brown people, drop the damn kente cloth and start implementing policies like this, things that will materially change people's lives and help them. So like I said, we'll see what happens. We'll see if they can pull this one off. Hasn't been going that great. I'll let you guys know if I hear anything. Thanks so much for watching and listening. Take care and I'll talk with you soon.